Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to the series Understanding Construction Drawings. I'm a professor of construction management and I teach all forms of construction. In this particular series, I am looking at how do you read and interpret construction drawings for residential drawings. And uh, I have a textbook. This is the fifth edition of the textbook. So I'm basing it largely on the textbook. Uh, it's partially for students that are maybe taking a course and they want a little bit of a verbal or visual kind of presentation on it, maybe further than what they're doing in school. But it's also for you, the viewers out there, to just run through it and get a good sense of how to read construction drawings. If you want to purchase the textbook, I'll have a link in the description down below where you can purchase hard and digital copies for it. Uh, but you definitely don't have to have it for this um, series, but it would be helpful because there's thousands of questions and more and more detail um, in the book. But let's get started. So today, uh, which is the second video in the series, and again, if you don't uh, know the series, check my playlist and you'll see a long list of uh, videos once I get them completed. This is only the second one, and I'll also leave them in the description below. Okay, so today we're gonna be looking at drawing types. And I don't mean that we're gonna be looking at uh, just floor plans, elevations, section details, so on and so forth. I, I'm gonna start at the very basic level of the drawing types, like perspective drawings, isometric, oblique, orthographic, how they're used in construction and where they're really predominant, like orthographic is in everything, and where they're maybe not as predominant, the other three. So we'll, let's dive into it and see where it takes us. All right, so as I said, today we're gonna be um, looking at identifying the different types of drawings and their best use in a, applied to construction. This is right now, you're looking at two types of drawings in this one view. This is from a set of drawings we use in the textbook called the Bray side. And so this is a front elevation for a house. And we'll talk about uh, this type of drawing, which is an orthographic drawing. This is also an orthographic drawing. This is a roof plan. So this is looking from high above uh, straight down. And you'll see some type drawing types gives you more information than others. And there's reasons and logic uh, behind that, which I'll jump into as we go along. All right. So as I said, there's perspective, there's isometric, there's oblique, and there's orthographic. And we'll get to the orthographic last, but we'll spend a little bit more time on that one. All right, so the perspective drawings, for those of you that are artists, that's what a perspective drawing is. It's like uh, how you view it with um, your eyes, how you see things. And I guess the best explanation I've ever seen is where, you know, you're on, standing on a railroad tracks, don't do this at home, of course, and uh, they just disappear, like the two rails, they kind of join each other in the distance when you're looking down them. That's giving you a real kind of view of how um, your eyes see it and how your brain interprets it. And so really good if you're artistic that way. Uh, you'll see that we use it in construction, that we use it for promotional drawings, uh, renderings that are trying to give a realistic view of what this is going to look like. You'll see that uh, developers that are trying to sell these homes, you know, you'll see they have these home sections in newspapers and they have basically on their websites, you know, these nice sort of three dimensional views in the sales centers, usually located near uh, where the houses are being developed. You can go in and they've got like um, pamphlets and renderings and pictures on the walls so that you get a really good sort of sense of what it looks like. This is basically a rendering for the Doncaster house. So we have different names on the different houses uh, just so that it gives it sort of um, distinction. Usually developers will do that. And so this would be a perspective drawing. You can see the front, but if you notice the going down the side here, um, you'll notice that front of the house seems taller than the back of the house and that's because it's going to a vanishing point. It's giving a very kind of realistic view of how um, you would see this and so it's very attractive with the landscaping and everything put in. So it's a very artistic 
um, rendering. I'm not very good at doing those types of drawings myself, uh, but some of you probably are that are viewers and you get it right right away. Um, but if you don't, this is what it is and this is why. Um, the other one is isometric. It gives a three-dimensional view too. The advantage of that is that it's less artistic. It can be scaled. Uh, so we'll talk about scaling in another video because I get into that. Uh, but basically it's just proportionally reduced so that basically it looks like what it is that you're seeing. Um, it, with isometric drawings, they draw horizontal lines out at a 30 degree angle and vertical lines are drawn vertical. And so that's kind of the crux of it uh, to give you an isometric view. So this could be scaled um, using a scale ruler if you're drawing it, that sort of thing. So it makes it easy to be proportional. You'll see a lot of drawings like in textbooks and different things. They'll very often be just like an isometric kind of sketch. Uh, when I sketch something, even if it's a rough sketch, it's not exact isometric. It's pretty much that way because uh, that's sort of the way my mind thinks uh, in sketching something out. If I want to quickly explain something to somebody, um, that's usually how I tend to go about doing it. But you can very readily see this is a cabinet and, you know, this looks like it's a square. But if you actually did a measurement between here and here, you would find that that's basically 120 degrees. It's not a, it's not 90 degrees, it just, but visually the way it, your mind looks at it, it looks like it's basically a square. Um, this is the, the next one is on oblique drawing. So oblique drawings, basically um, one surface remains parallel. So in this case, it would be this with the little lines through it. That would be basically a straight on view. So this, this part here is orthogra what we call orthographic but then it goes off on an angle. And usually oblique drawings, they go off at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, and it gives a real good view of what this looks like. Like if I just look at the end without looking at this part, I'm not sure everybody knows this would be a crown molding. But once you start pulling these lines off to the side, um, it really now it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. It's a crown mold. Um, so that usually is, is used very helpful for things like crown molds. Like you can do it for the houses and different things like that. So basically the front is um, basically straight on view, but the roof, because it is going off, this is going off on an angle 45 degrees here, is also proportionally drawn off. And, but it gives a very good sense that this is a three-dimensional building and you can um, sort of look at it really well. It may not be as attractive, going back a few slides here, it may not be as attractive looking as this and as realistic as this, but it does give you a really good sense of what you're um, looking at. So those are three three-dimensional uh, type drawings that you will see typically out there. All right, so let's get down to the crux of it. Uh, orthographic drawings, uh, orthographic drawings give you straight on view. So 3D drawings, it gives you, lets you visualize the structure and more and more in construction. I'm gonna do another little video on this too, uh, which is at the end of chapter one, which is introducing BIM and building information modeling. And a BIM model is a three-dimensional model. Sometimes they'll refer to it as a digital twin of the building, which means it's got to be able to be um, three-dimensional so that you can rotate it, you can walk through it, you can see things that you wouldn't see um, normally on construction drawings. But we are moving more in that direction. But to put all the detailed information that we need, we still need orthographic drawings, which are just flat on view. So I, you know, I, I find orthographic, it's a big word. It's just flat on view. So those of you in construction, uh, like floor plans, elevations, section details, site plans, they're all drawn orthographically, right? They can be drawn three dimensionally. And I'll show you that in the other video. But I mean, to put all the information we need to be able to lay it out, dimension sizes and um, leader lines with uh, bits of information, we need to have um, what we call orthographic drawings. What do I really mean by that? Well, every face of the building needs a drawing for it, basically. Um, so if I've got a four-sided building, I am going to have then 
four views. I'm going to have a front view, a right view, a left view, and a rear view. I'm also going to need like an overall plan view. That was like the roof plan I showed you at the first slide, right? So I'm going to need a roof plan. Uh, and then I'm going to need like views that are like cut through the building that I'm looking inside the building. Those are what we call floor plans, right? And so orthographic drawings are the means that we're able to produce that. So we have a number of views and we should have a view for every side that we're drawing of the building or structure. I might have in the book some some areas where I just show like a front view, a top view and a right side view. But the reality is you'd have a left side view and a rear view, right? Like for on a real construction drawings, just to make that absolutely clear with people, you would want to have that. So like this is giving, here's a good example where you're only seeing three views of the building, but it's just to give you that sort of um, idea. So what's happening is the views are being projected out onto this glass box so that you get a sense that you're just seeing these flat views. You're not seeing them three dimensionally. And reality, because this is um, actually drawn kind of like an isometric drawing uh, here, um, is that even this is actually going to look like that. That's your front view. That's going to be your left side view. That's going to be your plan view. And these are orthographic. It means they're just flat on views. Just think they're just flat on views. I can't tell the slope of the roof here. Um, there's things that I, I often can't be sure of when I look at one view of orthographic. Very often I have to look at a series of views to get the full picture of it. But all you got to think about is that it's just whatever you could see straight on that should be on that one view. I can't see the left side, I can't see the right side, I can't see the rear, but I can see the front. And then the left, okay, and I get information, like I can see, okay, this is going, that, that relates to that. Everything should be related to each other and everything should be scaled proportionally to each other, right? Um, back in the old days, they used to, you know, they used to miter, do a miter line and then you knew that that had to be the same height and so on and so forth, um, that that was very important. It's very important that sizes translate from one view to another view. Drawing software today makes that much easier, like much easier. And then um, with AI reviews and other things that are um, happening now, it's making that less likely to make mistakes. Uh, one of the fundamentals I want to just say for reading drawings really well is being able to pick up a problem on a drawing before you're actually constructing it, it's magic. Like if you get good at that, you're going to be so valuable, right? Being able to look at a set of drawings and say, and then look at the other drawings and say, this isn't correct. There's um, a problem here. And then doing what we call an RFI, contacting the consultant, but doing it in writing, request for information to get a answer on, well, this seems to be incorrect, or this is missing this information ahead of time. It's gold. It's gold because we have so much waste in construction, so much waste. Uh, and there's so much opportunities for improvement. So this is the wonders of construction I'm thrilled about is how, how construction is changing and how we can go about um, reducing and eliminating waste. So the stuff is very basic and fundamental that we're talking about right now, and it will advance as we go through um, different videos in this series. Um, but basically, your three-dimensional um, view, basically, when you're seeing this, what you're trying to do is you're trying to look at a set of drawings, orthographic drawings, and visualize this. Now, this is where building information modeling can really be helpful because you can have a 3D model and you don't have to be quite as experienced at that. That can be good, that can be bad. But I really, I think overall, it's going to be really, really good because I miss things too all the time. So, you know, um, that can be helpful. Um, so as I was saying, when we think about our drawings being orthographic views, they're flat, straight on views. And here, like, look at this. I can't really see how much this sticks out. I know it's, for me, I know it sticks out because of the roof lines, because this wouldn't have a hip here. This has a hip here. This has a hip here. And there's a valley in behind where it basically intersects with this roof. There's a valley in behind where it intersects with this roof, which is telling me this sticks out. But I don't know how much. I would have to look at the plan views 
and I would have to look at the right side views and the left side views. So orthographic gives me really good flat on views. Remember, flat on views. Perspective isometric uh, oblique will give you three-dimensional views, a 3D model that you've got basically in model space you can rotate, look at from any kind of viewpoint, which is really um, helpful from that point of view. But what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to put information like basically what is the elevation from the finished ground floor to the finished second floor. Okay, it's 9 foot 11 inches. It's 9 foot 11 inches. I know from the finished ground floor, which is top of subfloor, to the top of the subfloor of the second floor, how high this is. If I then know the thickness of my plywood, the, the depth of my joists, I can then figure out how high my walls need to be. If I know how high my walls need to be, I can deduct the size of the plates. If I know the si size of my plates and I deduct them, then I can figure out my stud length. We'll talk about all this stuff further in the course, but basically this is an oblique drawing. This is the type of drawings that you see most in the construction drawings apart from a 3D model. So I'm Tom Stevenson. I hope you're going to enjoy this series. Check out my playlist. I have a lot of videos uh, over the years and I, I want to thank the millions of viewers that have been watching the various videos. And if you have questions and comments, I may not always be able to answer them because I am kind of busy, uh, but I try. I try. So I, I wish everybody the best and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.